While on a recent hunt for Osceola turkeys in Florida, the crew and I were given an opportunity to do some hound hunting for wild hogs on a large cattle ranch that adjoins an even larger nature preserve. The fellows that work the ranch are more than willing to help trim off whatever feral hogs manage to cross the fence from the preserve to the ranch, something that benefits both parties. They've got a dandy setup and refined methods. We were lucky enough to score one for ourselves and then use it to make a dedicated meat eater wild hog cooking special. I'm Steven Ranella. To me, hunting isn't only about the pursuit of an animal. It's about who we are and what we're made of. I live to hunt and hunt to live. I am a meat eater. On this episode of Meat Eater, we're going full bore. I'm going to take this Florida wild hog and show you how to cook a variety of great dishes using ingredients ranging from the tip of his feet to the end of his nose. I'll be enlisting the help of Matt Weingarten, the man that has taught me more about wild game cooking than pretty much anybody else. He has graciously offered up his kitchen and his expertise to help cook this hog, nose to tail. When I got my hands on this wild pig, the first thing I thought was, I want to take the pig in its entirety and bring it to Matt and say, like, Matt, what would you do with a pig? You can tell by looking at this guy, he survived some skirmishes. His tusks are busted off. One of his wetters is broken. He's an old pig. The upside to this is this pig is what they call a barrel hog, where a hunter at some point had caught this pig with his hounds and then castrated the pig and turned it back loose. As they put it, it takes uh, his mind off ass and puts it onto grass. That's what he is. So he's old but castrated. I have on good information that he's probably a quality pig, but it's just not like a pig that I see when I would go into your restaurant and you'd have like a pig that had three inches of, of oh, yeah. blubber hanging off it yeah, yeah. You know, in any one direction. So without getting into like the technicalities of what the pig's genetic origins are, right. like wild living pig versus farm raised pig, how do you view it and what do you do differently and how do you think about the whole project differently? Usually when you think of a pig in a restaurant, you're always thinking about the fat, you know, it's like, either how to, how to accentuate the fat or minimize some of the fat, even sort of extract some effect. You know, my personal philosophy is always energy in is energy out. So this thing's been just, you know, running around. So yeah. it's been working its muscles. So I think that's just going to translate to great flavor. After careful consultation with Matt, we came up with the, the following four dishes we're going to do. In your new book, Preserving Wild Foods, you have a thing on head cheese. Absolutely. So yeah. I wanted to see head cheese come to its own. We're going to do cracklings or pork rinds with the pig's skin. We're going to bone out front shoulder, ribs, and some other parts, and do a sausage. And finally, we're gonna do a brined and smoked back ham, but we're gonna bone that ham out and do a tied roast ham. So it's gonna be like a whole boneless leg bundled up into a football-shaped package. The dishes we are crafting from this pig all have multiple steps and require forethought from the moment that the animal's life ends. In the field, I make a point of retaining all the edible parts and putting together a plan for their use. I cut and shave a piece of pig skin for cracklings, retain the whole head and then clean it up, cut off the trotters, and then harvest and clean the small intestine to make sausage casings. This same care and planning happens in the kitchen, and since there's only so much time in the day, we did some prep earlier. We brine the head and trotters, shave and prep the skin, brine our back leg for ham, and set our hog gut in salt water. A lot of great meat on a pig is like jowls, tongue, all this meat around here. It's got a lot of gelatin in it, which makes it, so it makes a really strong bind. What I'm gonna do with this head is simmer this head down and pick the meat and make a head cheese out of it. It's really, really good. I know a lot of people out there hear the term head cheese and they get in their mind that it's like somehow it's like brain or or whatever. Head cheese isn't even a great name for it. Yeah, no. I don't think like like how would you put in just like layman's terms right. like what is head cheese? The easiest way to think about it is cheese basically just means case. That's how we get it. So it's actually in and it's cooked in like a case. So it's basically gelatin, any meat. It can be head, it can be knees, it can be parts of the ham that's just boiled in a nice aromatic broth. That broth has enough gelatin in it and then you set it into a terrine. It's got yeah. enough gelatin where that meat forms into a shape. Jello mold. Yeah. Which sounds a lot more appetizing than yeah. head cheese for some reason. Head cheese trips people out. In the book, I call it bits, jumbles, and jelly. So, so it's kind of like <laughs> get away from the head cheese part. 
So I don't know if Bits, Jumbles, and Jelly is going to win converts. I mean, I'm sure it tastes great, but I don't know if that's going to make dudes want to eat right. it. Okay, the pickling process on the head takes about 24 hours. And at that point, you feel the texture kind of changes, smells pickled. The eyes take on an eerie, milky color, yeah, I yeah. gather. Yeah, they <laughs> so, pickled nicely. So, so the next step now is to cook this head down. And we're going to make a new, what would you call that? What we're going to make a court bouillon, basically, basically a nice aromatic broth. Uh, that's going to end up becoming the aspic or the or the gelatin itself. Okay, so so that liquid is going to assume all the gelatin that's trapped. Absolutely, inside of that head. I think the single biggest factor that separates sort of professional food from from home food is 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 time. And is there a sense of like marinating stuff or just not using straight water, just having having more aromatics, having more ingredients around? I, I think if you take the time to just you know. Always think about enhancing your flavors. Yeah. Um, it makes it makes a huge difference. Yeah. So I'm gonna uh, put all these herbs into a sachet and the peppercorns. And what that's gonna help us with is all those peppercorns aren't gonna be floating around with the meat. It's gonna make it a cleaner operation. Yeah, exactly. Bay leaf, thymes, a good amount of parsley. Kind of helps helps with the pigginess, if you if you will. Go ahead, tie that up. I'm gonna throw a constrictor knot on here if that's all right with you. <laughs> More vegetables, carrot, celery, onion, two leeks, and a head of garlic that we're gonna whack in half. And this will cook for about three, four hours until that meat's totally pulling apart. Okay, now what? So Do our liquids? Yeah, two cups of white wine. That's just half a cup of white wine vinegar. And now fill this to cover. Do it just to cover, or almost even a little bit under cover, because we're gonna have to reduce that liquid down and that's become to come the jelly. So the more cool. water we start with, the more the we're gonna have to boil. The longer it takes to get it all ready to rock. You could make a smoked ham from the back leg of pretty much any large animal on this planet, but few animals are as palatable and as appropriate as Sus scrofa the single species that accounts for every pig in America, be it domestic, feral, wild, or what have you. It's a perfect and beautiful application for this critter and an elegant and fitting way to respect the animal's life. What's gonna make this particular ham special is Matt's brine. It's a much sweeter and more sophisticated version than the typical concoction I use on bear and boar hams. Matt uses brown sugar, orange peel, celery seed, allspice, clove, bay leaf, salt, cracked peppercorns, and garlic. Here's where we're at with the smoked ham. This is a bone out or boneless ham. So this thing looks like a mess because we've plucked the femur out here, but this is the whole leg, like from here to here, cut right here, pull the femur out, and it just opens up. We're gonna resurrect it by putting it into a net. It won't look like a hand grenade went off inside an animal's leg. One thing I like to do when I'm rolling hams, I like to sprinkle some gelatin. Yeah, I've never tried this, but it's a good idea. Just yeah, to keep yeah. everything bound up. You know? Yeah, basically it'll it'll just help it completely compact, and especially when you serve it the next day, you're gonna get a nice slice of uh, ham. It's gonna be gonna be a perfect wheel. So I use one of these to do my rolled roast. Slip that right on. Like loading the cannon. If you've ever witnessed the birth of a person, this is gonna be reminiscent of that. Comes out kicking. Beautiful. When that thing cooks, it winds up becoming just like a little bundle. Like you can unwrap it and it keeps its, you know, it keeps its shape. Beautiful. All that's left to do is tie it off and get this guy into the smoker. Look at that, man. That's great. Those skulls coming out nice too as a trophy. Yeah. If you're gonna boil skulls anyways to clean them up so you can put them on your uh, shelves and whatnot. Might as well make hitches. The pickling did its job too because that meat looks nice and pink. Oh yeah. And it doesn't have that gray kind of deathly look. Oh, that's beautiful too, right? It's pulling apart. A lot of fat, a lot of gel. Pick that a little bit too, huh? Yep, we'll, uh, we'll try to pull all that meat out of there. Awesome. Once we have the head removed, we strain the cooking liquid and reduce it for use in our terrine. Go ahead and chop up that parsley. That's gonna go into the final terrine. So we're just gonna mince up these uh, shallots and chop up that parsley pretty fine. And then that's gonna get mixed 
with the picked meat. After that broth has reduced, it'll get nice and gelatinous. Pour it all together in a bowl and then set it in this terrine. It's gonna make like a like a jello mold with has has pieces of pickled pig's head, pig's feet in it, shallot, a touch of vinegar, and uh, parsley. I like to have that interplay between the sort of the soft meat and the snappy uh, collagen gelatin. Yeah, perfect. The tongue pickle, nice, right? It's gonna we're gonna mix in this bowl here. All right, it's gonna go that some of the some of the feet meat, feet skin. So you can see the mosaic already, right? Put all that tongue in there. Beautiful. Put in some of our aromatics. And then what we're gonna do is season this meat to taste with just some salt. We got a little bit of salinity in the broth as well. It's gonna be the jello. But if we season this so it tastes good now, by the time we add the broth, which also has some salt in it, uh, when it's cold, it's gonna taste just right. Things that are cold taste less salty. Just one Like when taste. it's hot, if you season it just to just salt enough, it's gonna seem a little- It's gonna taste bland when like you're a little it's cold. unsalty, yeah. call it and all that. Maybe one. Oh, it's two tablespoons. Let's give that a stir. So that's good enough to eat right there, man. Oh yeah, that's that's you know make a salad with that right there. Head cheese salad. I'm gonna put a little bit of vinegar in as well. So I just lined this mold with some plastic wrap. Just makes it easier to pull it out. Well, it's not as hard to break the mold when you exactly. Yeah, you know, put a layer of that down. Yeah, I'm just gonna mix a little bit in here just to, to coat it all well, and then we're just gonna lay a little bit, pour a little bit, lay a little bit, pour a little bit. Lay it right in there. Don't pack it down too much because you want, you well, want, you want, you want all it. There, yeah. You want it like floating, really, you know. So that's beautiful, right? Nice. That looks good already, right? Yeah, it's gorgeous. Kind of see how it's gonna look when you slice it. So aspic is just the French word for uh, for jello or jelly. It's uh, all the gelatin that's been extracted out of the bones, as well as this has some of the collagen from the skin in it. Now in America, you're so accustomed to anything jelly being like a sweet fruit jelly. Oh yeah, totally. When you do like really good game meat set in that kind of jelly, it's just unbelievable. It's, it's great. It has a much more intense flavor than anything. Totally, usually because it's also the, the, a lot of that jelly is being cooked under pressure, or like a little bit of meat juices that are forming at the bottom of your pate. Uh -huh. And so it's just like, it's like pressure cooking. It's, that is beautiful. It's almost a shame to eat that. No, no, it's gonna be right, just the right thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Right now we're twisting these off into links. And there's a lot of ways to do sausage links. I think of them as like bun-sized links or brat-sized links. And what Matt's doing here is he's just letting some of the, there's little air pockets in here. I use that at home as like a sewing needle, but kind of a fat sewing needle. I do the same thing, just poke it out and get all the air pockets out of there. I mean, that's like restaurant grade casing now. Yeah, when you told me about it, you were like, I don't know if I grabbed the right gut because it's really thick. Yeah, well, I mean, it's all laying there, you know, right. and there's parts <laughs> laying everywhere and you're just kind of like <laughs> grabbing gut out of there. It's hard to tell what, it's hard to tell what you're after. I'm, I'm, I'm super excited, like geeky happy. Yeah. The final step in prepping this pig in the field is I want to scald a bunch of the hide and scrape the hair off so I can make fried pig skin. Here's our pork skin. After many hours of cooking in that broth, pulled it out and patted it dry, and you can see now that it's rubbery, and I could actually tear this thing into pieces. The last step I want to do now is Matt wants this thing right down just to skin, so I got to scrape away a little bit of this fat that's left on here, and then we're going to put it into a dehydrator to dry it. Also in the dehydrator, we're going to put stuff for a chili lime seasoning, which is going to go on the pork rinds. For the salt, what we're going to do is take some salt, some chilies, the lime zest, some coriander, a little bit of cinnamon. I'm gonna grind it up real well. And then I'm gonna actually squeeze some of the lime juice into the salt. And that's why we need to put in the dehydrator. It's gonna dry back out. It's gonna be really nice, sort of bright and spicy and just delicious. You just putting the salt on there like the same way you'd put salt on. Right, so. Out of the deep fryer, just like when you're frying fish, you might pull them out and then put some seasoning on. The rule is everything that comes out of the fryer gets salt on it immediately. So the salt sticks right to it, just like you were making french fries. Oh man, that's got some. Right? Like you need some tequila. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, it does, man. It does make you start thinking about. This is ready to cut up now. So this started out, dogs catch a pig, stab the pig in the throat, skin it, drape it over a stump, dump some hot water on it, scrape it, cut it out, boil it for a long time, scrape it some more, cut it up, dehydrate it, and then eventually deep fry it, and then eat it. I don't care how much fat's in this, man. All that activity that goes into it, you're gonna come out a <laughs> lot lighter, a lot skinnier than when you begin. Yeah, you're, you're, still, you're still calorie negative, I think. There we go. We're gonna try to get these pretty dry, about four to six hours, you can go longer. You mean like dry like jerky or drier than jerky? Should be like crackers. Get all that water out and then it's gonna help it get nice and crispy in the oil. Well, it's time to do our final stages of cooking before our guests arrive. I'm outside grilling up the sausage while Matt is inside frying the dehydrated skin into cracklings. Wow. The ham is done smoking, and our head cheese is ready to be taken out of the mold. Does this part make you nervous or no? No, this one I'm not nervous about. <laughs> oh, that's right, because you got the liner. Look at that. That's the ticket. Yeah. Look at that. Beautiful. <laughs> Man, this looks good. You got oh, look at that. That's a nice ham. Too sweet for you? Not too sweet. That's my ham. You like it? Oh, yeah. That's claim. my. That, that, You'll claim that one? That's my profile, right? It's definitely on the sweet <laughs> side, but I got a little bit of a sweet tooth. Go. Over here. Put that head cheese right here. It really is from gut to toe to nose to leg. It's everything. Oh, I'm pretty excited great. about that. Yeah, everything turned out great. Let's dig in. Pass those crack ones around. Steve's got to get in, get involved here. Yeah, Matt managed to basically replicate what you put on a Dorito, man. <laughs> I thought they had that stuff hat and protect. Man, those are so. So for this wild pig, do you get that tender, buttery pork belly like you would at a really expensive restaurant? You, you didn't you give me any belly. What happened to the belly, man? It, it, it's not there. To me, it looks like deer belly. Wow. It's just lean. So you said this guy's 
probably significantly older than what you'd be able to just go out and buy. So what does that mean in terms of taste? I got this philosophy that's energy in, energy out. So this pig probably lived a, you know, pretty hard scrabble life. You know, all those muscles have been really working, all that myoglobin. It's, I think it's just a, it's a richer meat. You look at that ham, it's like, it's not light, light pink. I mean, there's some areas, but you got some nice dark areas and it's just, it's not the other white meat, white meat. This is the other pink meat. It's the other, yeah, <laughs> the other red meat. But it's pretty mild, I would say. I mean, nothing that we ta taste it as, as, as a hint of gaminess to it, you know? The head cheese is crazy, because it's one of those things you look at and you're like, well, what is going on right there? It's not, it doesn't look like something that's necessarily um, something you want to eat, I guess. Yeah, like you might know, be something you find in the ocean or something. Yeah, exactly. Or, or like, like a jellyfish gone or wrong. Or like you walk through and like try and clean off your shoe and it won't come off your shoe. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, it was head cheese. Hey there. <laughs> okay, maybe but, you, but you taste that, I mean, and, it, and it's phenomenal. And it's just, so it's, got, it's got an interesting texture that you know, you, you don't really realize what it's going to be like until you put it in your mouth. And it's, mm -hmm. Especially with the pickled ranch, the flavors are crazy. Mm -hmm. I'm glad it's good. Even if it was bad, I still would be glad you guys came because it's nice to, like when you cook something, it's nice to hear from people what their what their impressions of it are. And I also know that if you hated it, you wouldn't say anything, probably. You're probably all polite. <laughs> from now on, I'm going to hold you to all the casings, right? Every time you, every time you kill something, I'm just going to need, I need, I'm, I'm, bring a lot of of I'm not even going to yeah. empty it. I'm just going <laughs> to eat it. <laughs> okay, let me know what it was eating. We, we had a lot of fun cooking up all this food together. It was great. I'll continue to funnel game me your way. So. <laughs>